What you see in front of you now is a Ken Ken, and it's called a 4x4 Ken Ken because it has four rows and four columns. What I normally suggest that uh, people do when they're starting out with Ken Ken is to write the numbers one through four if you're doing a 4x4 four four, on the top side or bottom. And that way you can look at the numbers and realize the relationships between them, and it just makes the whole thing a little bit easier. For those of you new to Ken Ken, the first two rules are the same as Sudoku. In other words, if you look at this first row right here, as in any row, all four numbers have to show up, no repeats. And in each one of the columns, such as this one here, all four, row, all four numbers have to show up with no repeats. So that's exactly the same as Sudoku. The third item, though, the third rule is where it gets different. Take a look at this area over here, where you have two squares, and they form what they call a cage, and you notice that you have a very large, uh, thick line around here. Those two numbers, according to this scenario up here, have to add up to a total of four. These two squares right here, those two numbers, have to have a difference of two. So, for instance, it could be the numbers two and four, or it could be the numbers three and one. But they can be also in either order. You don't have to have the larger number on the top. So that's basically what these symbols mean right here. This one, for instance, two numbers are going to multiply to give you six. So let's go ahead and solve this Ken Ken and learn some techniques as we go. First thing you want to look for is free ones. And free squares are things like this. That's a singleton, and the clue says three. You've only got one choice. And if you try to fill in the rest of this row here, you notice that you've got a couple of problems. For instance, these two squares here have to divide to give you an answer of 2. So it could be 2 and 1, or it could be 4 and 2. But you don't know which combination. Not only that, you don't know in which order. So we're going to leave that for a while. We don't have enough information. Let's go to another cage over here. These two numbers have to add up to 4. And they can't both be 2's because that'd be a repeat. So it has to be either 1 and 3 or 3 and 1. And what I usually suggest people to do is that right along this borderline here, put the two numbers that are going to have to appear in the two squares. The only question is, which goes where? And in our situation here, the number 1 has to go on the bottom because you can't have a 3 because that would duplicate the 3 on the other side. So what that means then is the 3 has to go up here. And then if we look at this column, we've got 1, 3, so therefore these two numbers here must be 2 and 4. And if you want to put a reminder here, you can put a small 2 and a small 4 here. We're just not sure at this point where they're going to go. If we look at these, this cage right in here, we say we want two numbers that have a difference of 3. And this is where this scenario up here really helps. If you want numbers to have a difference of 4, it's kind of like looking at a number line you can see that those two digits right there, those two numbers, are separated by three. So if we come back down here, we can write a number one in here, and we can write a number four in here, indicating that these two squares have to have those in common. Well, we're getting a lot of choices here, but not a lot of answers. So let's see if we can go a little further here. Let's go back down to here. And we know that these two numbers have to be 2 and 4. So I'm just going to write the 2 here and the 4 here. And now let's take a look at this box right over here. And if we look vertically up here, we see that there's a 1 and a 4 here, which means you cannot have another 4. Ergo, which is Latin for therefore, means that must be 2, which means the 4 has to go over here. And now we're making some real good progress. We already have one row completely done. So that looks awesome. That looks very cool. So let's try back over here. In this column we have a 2, a 1, and a 4, which means the only remaining number must be a 3. So that has to go up here, which means, of course, that this has to be a 2 because the product of these two, according to our code here, has to be 6. Continue over to the left here, and we realize that the two choices we have are 2 and 4, Therefore, or with Latin, ergo, that must be a 4, and this must be the 2. And moving to the right here, 4, 3, 2, this one must be 1. has to be that way because you have to have all four digits and no repeats. 
which means that these two right here must be the, the digits uh, 2 and 4 in some order. And we're not sure exactly which one it's going to go, so we'll just see what happens. Well, let's come back over here and maybe we can make some progress on here. We need a 1 and a 3. Well, it turns out that you can't have the 3 here because that would duplicate the 3 over here. So the 3 we're missing has to go up here, which also brings another one of the uh, puzzle tricks here, if you want to think of it that way. Take a look at all four 3s, because that's the fourth 3 that, re that came in there. And all four 3s are in different rows and in different columns. So this is working out very well. Let's see if we can use that trick one more time. And what I'd like you to do is to look at the twos. You have a two here, here, and here. So where does the last two have to go? Find a row and a column that do not have a two. And if you look carefully, you'll find out that that last two has to go here. Which means that this has to be either a one or a four, because it has to divide to give you a two. And by process of elimination, that has to be one which means that this one has to be 4, that one has to be 1, and the only remaining possibility is this, this must be 4. And you can take an, another quick look over here and make sure that everything is correct, and uh, indeed it is, so we've now solved our first 4x4 Ken Ken. Congratulations.